In the vast, windswept wilderness of Chilean Patagonia, at the very edge of the habitable world, a skeletal remnant known as A460, or more evocatively, the Ayayima Woman, offers a rare and highly compelling window into one of the most isolated chapters in human history. Discovered in Ayayema Cave in the southern archipelago region of Patagonia and dated to approximately 5,100 years ago, this individual belonged to a maritime hunter-gatherer society that thrived in a place so remote it remains the southernmost location permanently occupied by humans in the ancient world. But what elevates the Ayayema woman beyond its geographical extremity is its remarkable biological heritage, a blend of Native American ancestry marked by traces of Australasians, including Australians and Papuans, and of archaic hominins, including Neanderthals and Denisovans. Combined with its extraordinary skeletal robustness and tantalizing whispers of giants in Patagonian myth and European accounts, the Ayayema woman becomes more than a historical relic. It becomes a cipher for unraveling the deep genomic legacy of early South Americans and their mysterious resilience. The fossil designated as A460 was recovered from the Ayayima site in the western Patagonian archipelago, a maritime region carved by fjords and glacial channels, part of what is now the southern Chilean coast. This area, south of the Strait of Magellan, has long posed immense challenges to human habitation due to its cold, wet climate, poor soils and geographic isolation. And yet, archaeological and genetic evidence reveals a robust tradition of maritime hunter-gatherers navigating this labyrinthine coastline for millennia. In fact, early Europeans' explorers were awestruck by their superhuman ability to withstand extreme cold, often going almost naked in freezing temperatures, even without a campfire. Radiocarbon dating places the Ayayema woman at roughly 5,100 years before present, positioning them in a critical time period when specialized marine adaptations were flourishing. These adaptations, seen in toolkits, dietary remains and coastal settlements, allowed small mobile communities to exploit rich marine resources like seals, fish and mollusks, echoing lifeways seen in Arctic and subarctic populations. The Ayayema woman, alongside others from this region, demonstrates cultural and genetic continuity with the later Kawaskar and Yamana peoples, suggesting that this isolated southern lineage maintained a distinct identity for at least 5,000 years. The Ayayema genome is a member of the broader southern Native American branch of the founding population that spread rapidly throughout the Americas. Genomic analyses suggest that the ancestral Native American population split from East Asians and Siberians around 23,000 years ago, likely during a long period of isolation in Beringia. Around 15,000 to 17,000 years ago, a sub-branch known separated and migrated southward through the Americas, eventually reaching as far as Tierra del Fuego. The Ayayema woman genome, like others from this region, shows high affinity to other ancient Patagonian and Tierra del Fuego populations. Interestingly, these individuals appear equidistant from their terrestrial contemporaries, indicating a split between terrestrial and maritime lifeways sometime after initial settlement, but before 6,000 years ago. While the maritime groups adapted to cold coastlines and high-protein diets, Inland groups relied more heavily on terrestrial game and plant resources. Crucially, Ayayema's genome, recovered from a tooth, carries signals of archaic admixture, specifically introgression from Neanderthals and Denisovans. These signals are subtle, but consistent with known global patterns of archaic ancestry. All non-African populations carry around around 2% Neanderthal DNA, and many Asian-derived lineages, including Native Americans, also contain traces of Denisovan DNA. The Denisovan signal is of particular interest in Patagonia, as some ancient individuals, particularly from Uruguay and Panama, have been shown to carry more Denisovan than Neanderthal ancestry. The presence of Denisovan ancestry in South America has profound implications. Originally thought to be confined to Southeast Asia and Oceania, Denisovan DNA has now been confirmed in small amounts among Native Americans, especially those deriving from the Southern Native American lineage. This suggests that Denisovan admixture occurred in East Asia before the ancestors of Native Americans crossed into the Americas via Beringia. The fact that Ayayema, far to the south in Patagonia, retains even faint echoes of this lineage testifies to the remarkable durability of that ancient encounter.
Moreover, the Denisovan signal is not evenly distributed across the Americas. It is found in greater abundance among some ancient and modern South American groups than in northern populations. This pattern may reflect the rapid dispersal and partial isolation of certain founding populations who carried more Denisovan ancestry, especially those who moved swiftly along coastal routes. Such a dispersal would be consistent with archaeological and genomic models, indicating rapid southward expansion as early as 14,000 years ago. The possibility that Denisovan ancestry contributed to the robust physique seen in Patagonian fossils such as Ayayema opens new interpretative vistas. The Denisovans, based on fragmentary fossil remains, appear to have been large-bodied hominins adapted to cold, high-altitude environments, such as the Tibetan Plateau. If their genes entered the human gene pool in East Asia, it is not unreasonable to suppose that some of these traits, strong bones, cold resistance, large lung capacity, were passed on and preserved in extreme environments like southern Patagonia. The Ayayama skull exhibits unusually thick cranial bones and pronounced muscular attachments, consistent with other finds from Tierra del Fuego and southern Patagonia. This skeletal robustness has long puzzled anthropologists, and it featured prominently in early European accounts of the region. In the journals of Magellan's voyage, the inhabitants of this region were described as giants, often claimed to be nearly six feet tall or more, an exaggeration but grounded in real physical distinction. Compared to the average European height of the time, about 5.5 feet, many Patagonian individuals were indeed taller and more heavily built. This robustness is not unique to Ayayama, but part of a broader regional pattern among the Yamana and Kaweska populations. What might account for it? While environmental factors such as high-protein diets, constant exposure to cold, and strenuous physical activity certainly played a role, genetics must also be considered. As discussed above, Denisovan ancestry may contribute to skeletal density and strength, while Neanderthal admixture is associated in some populations with increased bone growth and muscle mass. While the exact gene variants responsible have yet to be identified in these individuals, the hypothesis remains highly compelling. For instance, genes related to bone density or muscle mass, potentially inherited from archaic hominins, could have been advantageous in the cold, windy conditions of Patagonia, contributing to the thick cranial vaults and robust frames observed. Yet no direct evidence currently supports this hypothesis for Patagonian groups. Genetic studies would need to identify specific loci associated with cranial robusticity and determine if they have archaic origins. Given the complexity of polygenic traits like skull morphology, which are influenced by numerous genes and environmental factors, establishing such a connection is challenging. Moreover, the robustness observed in Patagonian skulls is consistent with patterns seen in other cold-adapted modern human populations who do not have elevated levels of archaic ancestry, suggesting convergent evolution rather than archaic introgression. For A460, the study provides additional context by placing it within a broader genetic framework. The researchers note that A460, along with other ancient Sumiduro samples from Brazil, dated to around 10,000 years ago, forms a clade that shares deep ancestry with Australasian populations. The Y. Hapler group inherited on the male lineage is QM848, also linking it to the Sumiduro fossils from Brazil. What's more, the Australasian ancestry is only found on the Atlantic coast of South America, except for one sample found in Panama. This is really perplexing, especially because the oldest samples are over 10,000 years old, suggesting that the population with Australasian ancestry is more ancient than other Native American groups. Ponder on that for a moment. However, the study also highlights a lack of shared cultural features among these samples, suggesting that the genetic signal does not necessarily correlate with cultural practices. This is significant for A460, as it indicates that while its ancestors may have carried traces of Australasian ancestry, this did not manifest in distinct cultural traits that can be archaeologically identified, such as specific burial practices or tool technologies. The presence of Australasian ancestry in A460 and other South Americans raises questions about the migration routes and timing of this genetic contribution. Both studies agree that the signal likely entered the Americas via the Pacific Coastal Route, a pathway that allowed early migrants to move quickly into South America. 
The study estimates that this migration occurred around 15,000 years ago, with radiocarbon dates from sites like Monte Verde in southern Chile, 14,800 years ago, supporting the rapid dispersal of these early groups. The study further refines this model by proposing that the Australasian signal was introduced before the formation of distinct Amazonian branches, likely in a coastal population that later spread eastward. One intriguing aspect of these findings is the absence of the signal in North and Central American indigenous groups. The study suggests that the migrants carrying this signal may have bypassed these regions, sticking to the Pacific coast and reaching South America without leaving a genetic legacy in the North. Alternatively, the Santos study posits that later population movements, such as those driven by European colonization, may have diluted or erased this signal in North and Central America. For A460, located in Patagonia, this coastal migration model aligns with its geographic position near the Pacific. The Australasian ancestry in A460 also prompts speculation about the physical characteristics of these early Patagonians, particularly their robust skeletal features. Patagonian skulls are noted for their thickness and robustness, with pronounced brow ridges and large mandibles. While these traits are likely adaptations to the cold, windy climate of Patagonia, the presence of Australasian ancestry raises the question of whether genetic contributions from related populations, such as indigenous Australians or Melanesians, might have influenced these features. Indigenous Australians and Melanesians, who share a common ancestry with the Australasian signal, are known for their robust skeletal structures, a trait often attributed to their adaptation to diverse environments across Sahul, the prehistoric landmass uniting Australia, New Guinea and Tasmania. However, the genetic contribution of Australasian ancestry to South Americans like A460 is relatively small, around 3%, making it improbable that it directly accounts for the observed robustness. More plausibly, the thick skulls and tall statues of Patagonians result from local evolutionary pressures, such as the need for thermal regulation in a cold climate and a protein-rich diet from marine resources which supported greater physical development. The significance of Patagonia as the southernmost occupied land in the world cannot be overstated. This region represents the farthest extent of human settlement during the early Holocene, a testament to the adaptability of A460's ancestors. This extreme southern latitude, coupled with the region's isolation, likely contributed to the preservation of ancient genetic signals like the Australasian ancestry, which might have been diluted in more northern populations due to later migrations and admixture events. The study emphasizes this isolation, noting that Patagonia was not reached by Mesoamerican-related expansions until after 5,100 years ago allowing A460's lineage to retain its early South American character. The Australasian ancestry in A460 and other South Americans challenges the traditional narrative of a single uniform migration into the Americas. Instead, it suggests a more nuanced history, where early migrants carried diverse genetic components from Siberia, including traces of Australasian ancestry, and dispersed rapidly along the Pacific coast. This model not only reshapes our understanding of the peopling of the Americas, but also highlights the interconnectedness of ancient human populations across vast distances, from Siberia to Patagonia. While the Australasian signal in A460 is a small part of its genetic makeup, it serves as a powerful reminder of the complex journeys that shaped humanity's global diaspora, culminating in the remarkable story of life at the edge of the world. Despite their extreme location and apparent physical distinctiveness, the people of Patagonia were not a lost tribe or evolutionary outliers. The Ayayima woman shows close genetic ties to both earlier and later populations in the region, including the 1,200-year-old Kawaska individuals and the 800-year-old Yamana. This genetic continuity, spanning nearly five millennia, suggests a stable population history with limited gene flow from other regions, a surprising finding given the presumed mobility of coastal hunter-gatherers. In contrast to regions like the Andes or Central America, which saw waves of migration, conquest and admixture, the southern archipelagos of Patagonia were a zone of genetic preservation. The rugged terrain and isolation served as a kind of biological archive, preserving not only ancient lifeways, but ancient DNA configurations, including archaic admixture signals that may have been diluted or lost elsewhere.
It is this isolation that makes Ayayema, and A460 in particular, such a valuable witness to the deep human past. The Ayayema woman is more than a fossil. A460 is a story etched in bone, carried by wind and tide through time, and inscribed with the deep codes of human history. From the Pleistocene steppe of Siberia to the storm-lashed coasts of southern Chile, the genetic ancestry of this person charts the incredible journey of our species. It links us to Neanderthals and Denisovans, to the first humans who dared to cross continents and oceans, to those who made homes in the last corners of the earth. In A460, we see the power of resilience, both biological and cultural. We glimpse the lingering fingerprints of archaic humans, the echoes of Denisovan robustness, and the quiet genius of adaptation in one of the harshest climates on Earth. The 5,100-year-old Ayayima fossil reminds us that even in the coldest, farthest places at the ends of the world, human stories endure. As archaeogenomics continues to advance, A460's story will undoubtedly illuminate more about our shared human past, bridging continents and millennia through the threads of DNA. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the channel for more updates.